Good morning from the Oklahoma Insurance Department. My name is Rachel Fan, and I work in the Communications Division here at OID. Thank you so much for joining us for our Medicare Mondays webinar series. For your awareness, I do want to mention that this webinar is being recorded. Before we get started, I wanted to share a little bit about what the Oklahoma Insurance Department, or OID, does. OID is a state agency, and we are responsible for regulating the insurance market and enforcing the insurance-related laws of the state. We have an entire team devoted to protecting consumers by providing them with accurate information and timely assistance. We can also deal with your insurance company if you cannot reach an agreement regarding a claim. If you would like to reach out to us for help or if you have any questions, you can call us toll-free at 1-800-522-0071. And you can also visit our website at oid.ok.gov. For today's webinar, you will be able to see and hear us. However, we cannot see or hear you. If you have a question, please feel free to post that in the chat. Down at the bottom of your screen, you will see several options, one of those being chat. And if you click on that, you can type your question there. We will save time to answer questions at the end of the webinar. Now I'd like to introduce our speaker, Ray Walker. Ray is the Divisional Director for the Medicare Assistance Program at the Oklahoma Insurance Department. Mr. Walker has over 20 years of experience working in and around the healthcare industry, primarily in insurance, and has had the privilege of speaking to groups across the state and around the country. Ray, over to you. Thank you very much, Rachel. Apologize for the technical issues we were having there in the beginning. Uh, trust me, it was all me. Um, and we're going to go ahead and get started now with our presentation. And before we do, I did want to remind everybody our program is funded by grants through the Administration for Community Living, and we appreciate those grants because they give us money to go out and educate people about Medicare, how Medicare works, how to protect themselves from becoming a victim of fraud, uh, things that they can do if their if income is an issue and they need some assistance for uh, paying for their health care and medications and such. And to do this, we partner with a lot of agencies around the state, a lot of area agencies on aging and other entities that can help with these same questions. We've got a lot of counselors who are part of tribes around Oklahoma as well. So if you'd like to learn more about who might be in your area, give us a call and we can share that information with you. Also wanted to remind people, we've got several other Medicare Mondays coming up. On September 11th, we'll be talking about getting ready for open enrollment which is going to start October 15th. Now, the new information about plans that will be available next year will actually become available October 1st. Also, I'm already getting reports from people that the advertising and stuff, while it's not directly aimed at open enrollment, there's a lot of information that's coming out about plans and things like that. So, Already mailboxes are getting inundated with information, commercials, and things like that. So we're going to be talking about getting ready for open enrollment and what are the things that you need to be considering and that sort of thing. Then on October 2nd, we're going to be talking about open enrollment, what you need to do, who you need to contact, the kinds of information you want to have available when you're talking to a counselor, and who are the people you want to talk to. Then on November 6th, we're going to talk about the Medicare marketing guidelines. CMS actually has uh, guidelines that uh, insurance carriers and people are supposed to be abiding by when they're out there marketing their products. And this impacts telemarketing as well. So we're going to go over what those guidelines are so that if you see a violation, you can report that back to us. And then lastly, for this year, we're going to talk about on December 5th, we're going to talk about the Medicare changes that are going to be in store for 2024. Now, we've had some people that have asked, hey, wait a minute, why are you waiting until uh, December to tell us what's gonna change for next year? The changes that we're gonna be talking about aren't changes that relate directly to your insurance. Those we'll go over uh, when we're talking about it on October 2nd and November 6th. The changes that we're talking about are across the board benefit kinds of changes that will be coming up in the following year and in 2025. So have no fear, we'll be covering those. So let's get to today's topic since we were a few minutes late getting started due to technical difficulties. And what we're gonna be talking about is the myriad of options that are available to people related to their Medicare. 
Uh, it's great to have a lot of options, but it can also become very confusing for people. So we want to talk about what those changes are. We want to educate people about, you know, do they even need to make any changes? Uh, a lot of times people will, will get anxious because they're like, well, I know I've got my retirement plan and I've got Medicare and I've got a drug plan, but I keep seeing all these commercials. Am I missing out on something? So let's talk about that some today, and hopefully we can put some of those fears to rest. Or if not, we can give you some guidance on who you might reach out to. So first things first, let's talk about traditional Medicare Part A and Part B and what they cover. That's sort of the basics of the Medicare system. So starting with Part A, most people get their Part A premium free. That's because you've been paying into this system for over 40 quarters or 10 years paying those FICA taxes. And that's what allows us to have our Part A premium free. Now, if you're an individual who has not worked that much, maybe you've only worked between 30 and 39 quarters, then you'd have to pay a monthly fee for Part A. That monthly fee in 2023 is $278. If you've worked less than 30 quarters, then you would have to pay the full amount and that's $506 a month. So that would be pretty hefty. Fortunately, most Americans have paid their 40 quarters and they're getting it premium free. Now, in addition to what a monthly premium would be, Part A also has some other costs, such as the Part A deductible. Now, this is for inpatient care. This is not for the other parts that are covered by Part A. This is strictly for if you had to go inpatient in the hospital, the first thing a beneficiary would have to pay is $1,600. That's the deductible, and that covers them for the first 60 days of care for each benefit period. Once they reach day 61 per benefit period, though, that goes up to $400 a day uh, for days 61 through 90. Starting day 91, that jumps up to $800 a day. And there's no cap on that. It can continue going up per benefit period. So it's important that people understand that those are the costs for inpatient care. Now, luckily in this day and age, we don't see lengths of stay going into those uh, areas as often as we used to, but it's important to understand those. The things that are covered by your Part A are the inpatient hospitalization we were just talking about. Now, this doesn't include emergency room or observation status. We'll talk about those under Part B. Skilled nursing facilities, those are covered by Part A of your insurance. These are those facilities that maybe you've been in the hospital and you don't need that level of care anymore. But hey, you're Ray, not I'm gonna anymore. interrupt you really quickly. Yes. It looks like the slides are not moving forward on the screen. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Let's see. What? There we go. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. You got to click on the right screen. I told you folks, I'm not a technical person. Okay, so here's our Medicare Monday screen and the options and that one. So I'm going to have to do a little double clicking here. So now we're caught up. So we talked about inpatient hospitalization being one of the benefits that's covered by Part A. Skilled nursing facilities are those facilities that you can go to after you've been in the hospital where you can continue receiving physical therapy, infusion therapy, something like that. Hospice care is the care that's provided to those individuals who uh, have a terminal condition. Uh, they have a life expectancy of 60 days or less, and that doesn't mean that they will expire within that time frame. Oftentimes people live far beyond that. Uh, I'm sorry, I said 60 days, it's six months. Uh, but uh, they've chosen not to receive curative care. They just wanna be as comfortable as possible for the time they have remaining. So then also home health care is also covered by part A of Medicare. So next, we are talking about Part B. Now, Part B has a monthly premium that everybody pays. This year, that monthly premium is $164.90 a month. Now, for people who are in a higher income bracket, and we're not gonna talk about that today due to time constraints, they might be asked to pay more for their Part B monthly premium. Also, in addition to the monthly premium, there is a deductible for Part B, and that is $226 per year in the year 2023. Uh, we haven't learned what that number is going to be yet for 2024. Once you've met that Part B deductible for the year, 
then you're going to pay approximately 20% of the Medicare fee schedule for any services that you receive that are covered by Part B. So what is covered by Part B on Medicare? That's what's going to cover your doctor visits, any outpatient services you receive, including emergency room services, lab, x-ray, MRIs, medical equipment, things such as wheelchairs, walkers, CPAP machines, nebulizers, all of that stuff. Preventive services are also covered by Medicare Part B. That's where you can get your mammograms, colonoscopies, and other services like that that are aimed at keeping you healthy uh, or catching conditions as early as possible when they're the most treatable. So that's kind of a quick overview of what we're talking about with Part B. So where do we go from here? Now we're going to talk about the things that uh, might be available to help offset the costs related to Medicare. The first one, though, we want to talk about is, are you still working? A lot of people are working well past the age of 65. And if you are one of those people and you've already got employer coverage, you might want to delay starting your Medicare. Uh, or, or maybe your spouse is still working and they uh, you're covered under their insurance. That gives you the chance, if you'd like to, to delay starting your Part B, and then you're not paying that Medicare Part B monthly premium yet. Now, if for, let's say that your employer has less than 20 employees, then you're going to have to go ahead and start your Medicare A and B because your employer coverage is going to pay secondary to that employer group coverage if the employer has less than 20 employees. However, if there's more than 20 employees, then Medicare can be, your employer coverage is going to stay primary, Medicare would be secondary, so you can delay that coverage and save that $164 a, a month. Uh, second one here that we're talking about is the retiree coverage through a previous employer. Let's say that you retired from some employer that provides retiree insurance coverage, and you have the option of keeping that coverage. Your Medicare is probably going to be primary to that employer coverage. In the vast majority of situations, Medicare pays as your primary coverage, and your retiree coverage comes in as sort of a Medicare supplement to pay the difference that's left over after Medicare is paid. Sometimes this retiree coverage includes drug coverage, sometimes it doesn't. So it's important to understand what those benefits are. TRICARE and TRICARE for life. Uh, TRICARE, in case you're not aware of it, TRICARE is the insurance that covers our active duty military personnel and their families. And when a person retires from the military, that becomes TRICARE for life. And like the retiree coverage, it acts as a really great Medicare supplement policy, and it does include prescription drug coverage. So a lot of the people that retire from the military will choose to take that. And there's some other options that are out there. So this is just some examples. So it's important to understand what is the coverage that you might have available to you, whether you're retired military, uh, possibly a retired federal employer, employee, or whatever the case may be, and how does that work with your Medicare? And I mentioned a minute ago, do you currently have prescription drug coverage, and is that coverage going to continue? Is it through a retiree plan? Do you have uh, access to drug coverage through Indian Health Services or through the Veterans Administration? Uh, COBRA coverage, maybe you were working uh, someplace and you're no longer working at that company, but maybe you've continued the employer coverage. Uh, it's time limited, but you can maintain that coverage. And, you know, did you choose to take out that coverage? Uh, you have to keep in mind when you're looking at what coverage you might have, is that coverage considered creditable? Which means it's as good or better than what Medicare offers. Now, most retiree coverage, most COBRA coverage, uh, is considered creditable coverage. We know for a fact that the drug coverage through Indian Health Services and through VA is considered creditable coverage. So it's important for you to be aware of that because if the drug coverage you currently have is not considered creditable, or if you don't have any drug coverage, you could find yourself subject to a penalty. Uh, the penalty is 1% of the base beneficiary premium for every month that you were eligible for drug coverage that you did not take it out. And you pay that penalty from now on. So it's very important that you not go more than 63 days without prescription drug coverage. 
Okay. So who is also on your current insurance? This is a mistake that people sometimes make because they fail to stop and think, what if I make this change for my insurance, is it gonna have a negative impact on say my spouse? Or if you've got dependent children that are relying on say your employer coverage or something like that. So always be aware that if you've got somebody else that's on your insurance that maybe is not qualifying for Medicare, you want to make sure you don't make any changes that's going to have a make create a problem for them. So talk to the benefits administrator or someone at your company that can tell you and and find out what you need to do so that they maintain coverage. So what if you want additional medical coverage? Let's say that you don't have retiree coverage. You don't have health coverage through Medicaid or something like that. What are the options that might be available to you so that you can help cover the costs that are left over after Medicare is paid? The first one we're gonna talk about very quickly is Medicare Supplemental Insurance, also called Medigap. This is the coverage that's available that uh, works along with your traditional Medicare. So let's say you go to the doctor and a claim is generated. The first stop for that claim is going to be going to the people at Medicare, people at CMS for them to pay their portion of the claim, which we know is gonna be around 80%. From there, what's left is sent electronically to your Medigap company for them to pay what they're gonna pay on that claim. And it's after they pay, whatever's left over would be yours to pay on that claim. So depending on which of the 10 standardized plans you purchase will define how much you're gonna to have to pay for those medical services that you've received. So there are 10 standardized plans that you can choose from, and each one of those 10 standardized plans covers different benefits and covers them at different levels. So it doesn't really matter which company you purchase your standardized plan from, the benefits are gonna be the same. What's gonna be different is the price that you pay. So we're gonna look at a chart here real quick to kind of show you what that would look like. So here's a chart of the plans that are available. Now you'll notice that there are only eight plans listed here. That's because starting in the year 2020, people who are new to Medicare cannot get a plan C or a plan F. Those plans are no longer uh, sold to people who are new to Medicare. If you were on Medicare before then, you could get one, but it might not be the best uh, choice. So on this chart, you can kind of see where the check marks are and the left-hand column shows you the benefits that are available to be covered by that Medicare supplement plan. And then the letters across the top represent the eight plans that are available to people who are new to Medicare. And if there's a check mark, that means that that leftover cost is covered at 100%. If you see a percentage, then that represents the percentage of the leftover cost that would be covered by that particular plan. So it's important for people to kind of evaluate what are the benefits they want to make sure are covered. And then looking at this chart, say, okay, which plans are, am I interested in getting a quote for? Now, we have access to a tool at the Medicare Assistance Program where we can actually do a comparison for you of the plans that are available in Oklahoma. And so, you know, feel free to reach out to us and we'll have our contact information here shortly and you can get a comparison of those plans that might be available to you. If you look at this chart, you'll notice that plan A is what we consider to be the basic plan. Uh, it covers you know, the least number of those benefits, but that's still a good chunk of medical costs. Plan G is what would be considered the Cadillac uh, of what's available to the, newly, the new people on Medicare. It covers everything except for the Part B deductible, that $226 that you have to pay at the beginning of the year. So for most people, what they're gonna, uh, they're gonna look at is, you know, okay, with, if I get this Plan G, then I'm gonna pay my monthly premium for that Plan G. And then after that, I'll pay my $226 at the beginning of the year, and then everything is covered from there. In addition to covering the Part B deductible, it also covers the foreign travel emergency. So if a per, if Medicare itself doesn't cover you if you're outside of the country, but there are a few of these plans, as you can see from this chart, that will cover some foreign travel emergency. So that's something else to consider if you're an individual who likes to travel. Now there's more that goes into this as far as choosing 
the right plan for you, but we are time limited in these webinars, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I would encourage you to call and speak to one of our counselors if you'd like some more details, or if you'd like for us to run a comparison for one or more of these plans. Now, you can also call 1-800-MEDICARE to get a comparison, and there's our phone number for our office if you'd like to talk to one of us. Always you can speak with a licensed insurance agent about the same information, but be aware when you're talking with an insurance agent, as with anything else, they're going to tell you the information, but they're going to focus more on the ones that they are uh, selling. You know, it's just like if you're purchasing any other product. So you want to make sure that you're shopping around, that you're trying to get the best price, because this is a product you're going to be paying for for a very long time. Now, as far as disability goes, now I'm realizing now that once again, I'm not advancing. So Rachel, don't hesitate to holler at me if I mess up again. I was about to jump in. <laughs> okay, we're gonna have to get a shot caller for this. Anyway, now, as far as disability goes, if you're an individual who's on Medicare due to disability, uh, every state is going to be different in terms of what they allow and what they don't allow. In Oklahoma, every company that, that offers Medicare supplement plans has to offer at least one of the standardized plans to individuals who are on Medicare due to disability during their six month open enrollment period. That's the six months right after they start part B. Now they cannot charge more than the lowest aged rate. That means they can't overcharge someone just because they're on Medicare due to disability. They have to treat them just like someone who's on Medicare uh, because of their age. And so uh, that's good news for them, but it's important that they take advantage of that in that first six months after their Medicare Part B starts. The ways you enroll in a Medigap uh, policy is you can contact the company directly or go through a licensed insurance agent. I always tell people, this is a personal preference, my preference is to talk to somebody face to face. I don't really like to purchase an insurance product over the phone because you never know the next time you call back, if you're going to be able to talk to the same person. So I like the idea of whether I'm talking about my car insurance, my homeowner's insurance, or my health insurance, I want to know who I can talk to about that. Now, you are free to call and ask us any questions. The MAP program at the Oklahoma Insurance Department is going to give you free, unbiased information. We don't get any money from any insurance companies or anything like that, but we cannot enroll you. That has to be done by a licensed insurance agent. So. Uh, be aware of that. We can do the comparison for you and we can take you all the way up to the point to where you know what you want to buy. But uh, once it comes to the point of actually doing the enrollment, you're going to have to do that through a licensed agent. Now, here's some resources. I've already said you can call us at the Medicare Assistance Program and we'll do those comparisons or speak with that licensed insurance agent. Next, we're going to quickly talk about the Medicare Advantage plans, also called Part C of Medicare. These are programs that have been around for quite a while now. I remember when they first started and they actually had a different name. Now we're calling them Medicare Advantage plans. These are plans that are offered by private insurance companies that contract with Medicare. They are also regulated by Medicare. They have to offer all of the same services that traditional Medicare offers, plus they typically will offer some additional services like dental, vision, hearing. Uh, most of them also include the prescription drug coverage. There are different types of Advantage plans that you need to be aware of. Uh, we're going to talk very briefly about the three most common ones that we see here in Oklahoma, the Health Maintenance Organization, the Preferred Provider Organization, and the Private Fee-for-Service Plan. I'm getting the hang of this now, guys. All right. The first one we're going to talk about is a health maintenance organization, the HMO. This is a plan that's going to have a contracted provider network. They're going to have providers, hospitals, ancillary providers that actually have a, they've entered into a contract with that uh, managed care company. And people who are enrolled in those plans are, are required to receive their services from those contracted providers. If you go outside of that network, you may find yourself responsible for 100% of those charges. Now, something to keep in mind, some of the companies that are offering these plans, they don't really restrict where these contracted providers are. In the old days, you had to go to the contracted providers who were in your service area. 
some of the health maintenance organizations out there will now let you go to any contracted provider anywhere in the country, but you want to make sure you understand that benefit before you purchase it. If you're somebody that sometimes goes to visit family in Texas or Utah or something like that, you want to know who are the doctors that you're going to be able to see if you're in those areas. So things to consider with an HMO are the doctors, hospitals, and other providers that you want to be able to continue seeing, are they part of the network for that particular plan? Uh, so I always tell somebody if they're considering getting enrolled in any kind of Medicare Advantage plan, you want to make sure that the main doctors that you currently see, if you're currently seeing a cardiologist or a pulmonologist, rheumatologist, anything like that, talk to those providers and say, if I enroll in this plan, am I going to be able to continue seeing you? It's very important to preserve that physician relationship. Now, if you're not currently seeing any provider or anything like that, that may not be as big of a barrier for you. So you just want to make sure that you're going to be able to go for care where you want to go to. If you live in a rural part of our state, and it's important to you to be able to go to your local hospital or local providers and not have to drive a distance to see someone, that's something to consider. So uh, you also want to consider how often you do travel. If you're a snowbird and you're going to spend half the year down on the coast, that's something to keep in mind as well. So next we're going to talk about the preferred, preferred provider organizations. Now, they're a little bit less restricted than the HMOs in that you can actually see providers outside of the contracted network or service area. But if you choose to go to a non-contracted provider, the plan is going to change a little bit. And so that instead of like maybe paying a copay to see that doctor, you're going to say a you're going to pay a percentage of the allowable charges. So let's say, for an example, if you went to an in-network doctor, you would have a $20 copay, a set amount of money. But if you went to an out-of-network doctor, you might change and be paying a 20, 30, 40%. Uh, coinsurance, so it's a percentage of the charges. Um, the So things to consider with the PPO are somewhat similar to what we saw in the HMO. You want to make sure at least that the main doctors that you see probably pretty frequently are in network for that particular plan. That way you still have the flexibility of going out of network if you want to, and if you've got the, you know, financially, if that's a good choice for you, but you don't, you can see your in-network doctors for those things that you know you're going to be seeing them for on a regular basis. Now, to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan, we have a tool that we can use to do a comparison for you at the Medicare Assistance Program where we can plug in all the medications that you're taking and stuff, and, and we can help you decide what plans are available in your area and what those benefits are and things like that and make sure that your drugs are covered. However, once again, when it gets to the point of actually doing the enrollment, you're going to have to talk to a licensed agent. And again, you can find agents here in the local area where you live who sell those products so that you've actually got someone to communicate with if you're having a problem. Okay, now let's talk about part D and I realize we're a little over 1030, but you know what, we got started late, so we're gonna fudge a little. To find the right part D plan is can be a little complicated because right now there's 24 different plans available this year. and We don't even know how many plans are going to be available next year. And those plans differ significantly in terms of the premium, the deductible, uh, the coinsurance, how much you're going to pay for your prescriptions, the drugs that are on the list, or that's also called the drug formulary and uh, as well as what pharmacies that they contract with. So it's very important that you take the time to do a comparison to know what is the best plan for you. Uh, the premiums vary by plan. The cheapest one this year is $7.60, I think. The most expensive one is over $100. What's different about those plans is the drugs that are covered by those particular plans. The deductible for the plans, the maximum of deductible can be this year is $505. Not every plan has that high of a deductible, and some of them don't have a deductible. Uh, so it's something to keep in mind as well if that's going to be a, a barrier for you. The, the discounts that you get in the donut hole, uh, at this point in time, thankfully, anytime someone goes into the donut hole or the coverage gap for Part D plans, the most they're going to pay out of their pocket is going to be 25% 
of the cost of a brand name drug or a generic drug. So that's been a, a, a great benefit for a lot of people since that started. Okay, so now we talked about the Part D plans. The Let's talk about uh, options for people who need some assistance. Cost is a barrier. For those people who are low income and maybe they don't, maybe they make too much money for Medicaid, but they still are struggling financially, there are programs that are available to help those individuals. We call those the Medicare Savings Programs or the MSPs. And you'll hear them maybe referred to by other names in various states, uh, but you can, re you can enroll in these by contacting the local DHS office to do the application. They help by offsetting the costs of Medicare, like some of them help pay the Medicare premiums. Some of them will pay the Medicare deductibles and the co-insurance. So depending on what your income and resources are, we can help you identify if you may qualify for one of these programs. Now, if you're wanting some information about the Medicare uh, uh, savings programs, you can call 1-800-MEDICARE. You can call us, you can call Medicare.gov. I also encourage you to reach out uh, if you go to the OKDHS OK Live website. It's OKDHS OK Live. There's information on there about these same programs and they've got, there are partners in working on this particular uh, incentive program and we would love to get as many people enrolled as we possibly can. So don't hesitate, regardless of where you are in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, please take advantage of this resource uh, and uh, we don't want anyone having to make a decision about not getting their medical care or their drugs. So now I know we're way over time, but Rachel, do we have any questions? We sure do. We've got a couple, so let's get through those really quickly um, if we have time. So the first question is, does hospice care cover the formula for tube feeding? Would you say that a little louder? I'm... Yes. Does the hospice care cover the formula for tube feeding? That I'm afraid that's going to be a question for someone at a hospice company. My understanding is it would be because they're going to cover those things for comfort care uh, and, uh, you know, for symptom management and things like that. But I don't want to say it 100%. If that is the way that a person gets their nutrition, then it's my understanding that, yes, that would be covered, but I would feel more comfortable given the fact that we're talking about somebody's nutrition here, get that straight from the hospice company. Perfect. Okay, so our next question. So earlier you mentioned that uh, you might wanna consider delaying Medicare enrollment if you're still employed. Mm -hmm. And would that mean you would want to do that in the event that your employer group plan costs less than Medicare Part B? Or can you just clarify a little bit more about the details of that? Sure. Um, frequently, the people that are still working, it's not just them. They've got a spouse, maybe some kids or something uh, on the plan as well. And their employer coverage, because it's probably got quite a few employees, the monthly premium comes out to be in the long run cheaper than what a person would pay overall if you include the monthly premium plus the 20 percent that you know it's left over for a person to pay so each person just kind of has to consider what are the benefits of my health insurance versus getting off of the employer coverage and getting a medicare supplement policy the other thing to keep in mind for some people they think well gee i'll get uh, I'll keep my employer coverage and I'll use Medicare as my secondary. They've got to keep in mind that Medicare, the way Medicare, especially Part B is structured, it's not necessarily going to cover 100% of what's left over after their employer pays. So some people get on their traditional Medicare and they, they're thinking, why am I getting this bill? Well, that's because Medicare is only going to pay up to what Medicare Part B would cover as a secondary. And that may not be the full bill charges. And I know that it sounds complicated. And if somebody wants to contact us, we can go into more detail. And Ray, I think you may have just answered this follow up question that someone just put in the chat. But um, this particular person, their employer has over 20 employees, and they wanted to know if they got Medicare Part B, um, 
which one would be the primary and which one would be the secondary coverage. If it's more than 20, if there's more than 20 and this person is on Medicare because they're over 65, then uh, their uh, employer coverage is gonna be primary. Now, I didn't mention it earlier, but if someone's on Medicare due to disability and they're covered by employer coverage, whether it's them or their spouse that's working, that number jumps up to 100. Good to know. Okay, last one that I've got here. So someone just wanted to clarify um, and confirm that COBRA is not considered credible coverage according to Medicare. Okay, so if we're talking about COBRA coverage for delaying enrollment in Medicare Part B as in boy, it is not considered creditable coverage. So that's for part B. What we were talking about was the drug coverage that is sometimes offered through a COBRA plan, which can be considered creditable. So they need to talk to the employer to find out is the drug coverage through this COBRA plan that I'm on currently considered creditable by Medicare. So it's one of those situations where Part B may not be considered creditable, but Part D might. Perfect, thank you, Ray. And I did just wanna put a reminder in here for everyone that a lot of people have been asking for the slides and to be able to view the webinar after um, it's over. And so I do wanna remind you all that if you go to our website, it's um, map.oid.ok.gov, which is on the screen right now, uh, there is a section for educational videos. And if you click on that, you can see all of the Medicare Monday webinars that we've done so far this year on demand at any time. And that includes the slide information. So be sure to go to our webpage under educational videos if you need to see the slides or the video from today. Okay. There's no more questions. Again, very sorry that we got started so late. Trust me, it was user error, and by user, I mean me. And uh, next week, look forward to, not, excuse me, next month, we look forward to seeing you uh, to go over our next topic, which I can't remember. Do you remember which one it was? The option, that no, we did options today. We're gonna be talking getting about ready getting ready, ready for open enrollment in our yes. next webinar. Hopefully by then I'll be ready. So. <laughs> All right, everybody, I hope you have a good day and we look forward to seeing you next time.